Hello and welcome to today's lesson. We are going to continue with rocks and minerals, but before that, let us have a review of what we did in the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we looked at rocks and minerals, where we define rocks as a mixture or aggregates of minerals. That is when two or more minerals combine, rocks are formed. Minerals, on the other hand, are compounds that are formed naturally. And we said compounds are formed when two or more elements combine. We stated that silicate minerals form about 90% of all rock forming minerals. And silicate is formed from the elements silicon and oxygen. So let's look at some examples of silicate minerals. They include olivine, fespa, mica, pyrazine, quartz, and amphibole. These are some of the examples of silicate minerals. So when you take any rock, you'll find either one of them in the rock or present in the rock. We also looked at some rocks and their composition. We said granite is formed from quartz, fespa, and mica. Chalk is formed from calcium carbonate, that is calcite. Marble, which is a metamorphic rock, is formed from calcium, carbon, and oxygen. Basalt is formed from pyrazine and plagioclase and salt is formed from sodium and chlorine so these are some of the examples of the mineral composition of some rocks that exist we also looked at how rocks are distinguished we said rocks are distinguished based on their texture and so with the texture they are either coarse grain which is rough or fine grain which is smooth or they are glassy. Secondly, we also distinguish rocks based on their structure. Some rocks are stratified, that is they are in layers. Some are foliated, that is the minerals present in the rocks are in layered form. Then we have rocks which are non stratified that is rocks which are not layered and we have rocks which are non foliated that means the minerals are randomly placed in the rock then we also use the mode of occurrence to distinguish between rocks we say some rocks are formed within the earth crust whilst others are formed on the earth surface then we use the color some rocks are black others green, others white, others red. So this color also distinguish between rocks. Then we use the porosity or permeability. We say some rocks are permeable, which means they are more porous. They contain holes within them which allows water to sink downwards, whilst other rocks are not. Some rocks are pervious. That means it will only allow water to pass through when there are cracks on the rock. So some rocks are permeable while others are impermeable. Then finally, we use the resistance to denudation to distinguish between rocks. Some rocks are very hard whilst others are very soft. Some rocks will easily disintegrate when they come into contact with denudation. And we say denudation is the wearing away of or the breaking down of rocks into pieces. Some rocks, it takes a very long time for them to weather or to break while others it takes quite a short time for them to dissolve or break when you take salt for instance salt will easily melt when it comes into contact with water whilst granite will not do that when you take chalk for instance chalk will easily break when it comes under attack by denudation while gabbro will not do that. 
So these are some of the ways we distinguish between rocks. So that is what we looked at in our previous lesson. Let's have a quick exercise so that we can continue with today's lesson.